Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds. It is a crazy time of the year. Whether you're a bee or a beekeeper, it's hard to keep up with them and sometimes you just don't. But right now we have a bunch of beautiful queen cells right here and they're fixing to emerge. I would say most of these will be out of these cells within 24 hours and one or two of them, you can already hear them going at the cell trying to come on out so we need to hurry up and get these things in a colony so we were doing a bunch of these catching a bunch of queens today and I thought well goodness might as well do a video so that's what we're gonna do so I've got this hive already broken down over here it's a nice sunny day nice and warm I'm gonna put a picture on Facebook of my buddy Jimmy and I which he's my son if you don't know catching uh, these queens over here so we can drop some of these cells. There's 25 mated queens right here. Got them in an old queen box and we'll shake some nurse bees in there. And in this colony that we have right over here, I've already captured the queen, so we don't have to worry about that, which is awesome. Now those queen cells were raised up in this top box. It's a qu really packed queenless starter finisher over another colony that we use to pull resources up on those cold nights of this double screen board really helps keep them warm so let's show you though this video's main purpose is to show you how we load our three-way mating nukes because you can make them too strong you can make them too weak and it really depends on the time of the year what i like to do we're supposed to get some nights down in the low 30s highs in the 50s so i'm going to make them a tad on the strong side but it should work just fine. How do I end up with two hive tools? Usually I can't find one, so this is a nice situation to be in. So what I'm wanting, if possible, is some capped brood, or mostly capped brood. So this is mostly capped over here. Some of the larvae down towards the bottom is still not capped, but it's very close to that stage. So that means there's not much work left to do. So this is a great candidate to take. This is probably a day or two out from being capped, by and large. And this isn't quite enough bees, though. We also have to keep in mind, if we keep this in the same bee yard, all the forager bees are going back. We don't want to make it too strong. Don't want to make it too weak. So that's going to be one of our brood frames right there. And now we're going to go over to this next one. That actually works out pretty good. So there's some capped brood there. Most of what's around it though is nectar. Yeah, this is mostly nectar on this side as well. So we're gonna stick this one over here. And this is all resources right here. All I'm really going for is one good frame of brood. It doesn't have to be very full, but you know, 50% fill with brood. And I need to make sure I have enough bees to cover that. And then I need a little bit of food. But right now there's a lot of food coming in, so that's already a little bit more food than that one needs. You definitely don't want to have two frames of food or three frames. And then you, after the bees go back to the original location, you only have one frame of actual bee coverage. That's where you run into problems with small hive beetles. Or wax moss, but uh, they're usually not as big of a deal. So this is all food right here. So we're gonna go over here. I've got a lot more to work with. Let's see, we've got a little bit of capped brood right here and some adhering bees. Yeah, this would be a good frame to take. All right, so we have larvae, different stages, some of it's capped. This would be all right, though, especially since they're all together in one box. And I think also because we're going to have a little insulated thing on top of them, it'll help out. So that's the middle frame for this one. This one didn't have much brood, so if I can get another partial or maybe just sub take that one out and substitute, that'd be better. 
here we go. So we have some calf brood here, lots of bee bread. And then on this side, I haven't smoked these bees in a while. Yeah, f food, bee bread, calf brood, low maintenance. So what we're gonna do is just go into here. We don't wanna make them too strong, remember? We don't want them swarming on us, but we are gonna take this frame And we're going to shake that down in there and put this one back in. And then we're going to give them this one. So now all three of them have one good frame of decent brood. Now we need to make sure they have plenty of coverage and they have room to grow and expand. One other thing that we're going to do is we're going to give them a frame of, you can give them foundation. I'm going to give them some drawn comb instead. But preferably with no bee bread in it. So we don't, they don't have to worry about anything, uh, eating it up or anything like that. Wax moss, small high beetles. They really don't like wax. You can't, you can't make healthy wax moss. You can't make healthy beetles on wax. There's not the proteins and fats that they need. They really want that bee bread, and, and you know, honey's a nice, sweet addition, but it's, it's really all about the brew, anything that's protein or fatty. Thankfully, we have the queen. If you can't find the queen very easily, what you can do is go into a double deep, shake all the bees down, put frames of larvae in the top box, and put an excluder below. Come back in a handful of minutes, 20 or so. Everything that's covering, by and large, that larvae is going to be nurse bees, and you know that queen shook down below. All right. This has larvae in it and some capped brood. A lot of fuzzy bees, that's what we want. And emerging bees, that's where they're coming from, so. This is a good frame to take. Look at that nectar shake right there. Jeez Louise, that time of the year. And now it's just a matter of making sure there's enough bees. Now, if you were taking this, closing it up and quickly taking it to another yard, again, you don't really have to worry about the forager bees going back. But m many of us just leave them in the yards. My buddy Zach accuses me of making these too strong. He's probably right. He's in Hawaii. They don't get 30 degree nights. You know, in this frame right here, just got mostly food on the other side, but it's got some emerging bees. So, you know, I'm gonna give that to one of these. It's gonna be a little on the strong side, maybe. All right, so there's a lot of bees in here. We don't have to have a lot of food. I'm fixing to show you why. I need one more drawn comb that's pretty empty. This apame frame will work. All right, so last frame. Again, by and large, there's pretty much just one frame in the center of each one that has brood in it. As long as there's enough bees to maintain that, then as that emerges, it's going to fill these up a little bit more. You definitely don't want a really packed, like one of those completely covered on both sides frames of brood, because it'll just, you know, one frame of really fully capped brood, it's gonna fill that up pretty fast, especially if you have quite a few bees in there. So that's one of the things you wanna kinda of watch out for. It's one of the reasons why I don't like doing the, the two frame nukes. Um, they can work, but they just don't give you as much leeway. Three are more forgiving. For those of you who don't understand what's going on, 
I've got two entrances on this side. If the weather's cool, you can always plug one. I've got two on this side and two on the front. The reason I started using two is it just, they needed more ventilation. Also, we want to stick this in a place that gets some midday shade. You maybe have a little more small hive beetle problems, but uh, I don't see a big issue with it. Not here anyways. All, both of these look really good. This one looks a little light on bees. So I'm going to shake just a little more on the edge side. And again, I'm just going for about two frames of coverage. I know that some of them are going to go back. There wasn't much on that frame. but And you can always shake bees out. You definitely don't want these things plugged up. But come back later. We're going to check these 14 days from now. I'm going to take these nice queen cells here. And you can see, kind of see, that cell down in there. And this makes it to where they can't chew at the cell from the side. Just helps give you a little bit more protection. Not everybody feels like this is necessary. And I'll show you how we put those down there in just one second. You want to be careful with these cells. And we're going to make sure this is up against one of the brood frames. And now it's just right down in there. And they're going to cover that brood and that is going to stay warm. And these cells are very ripe. They should emerge tonight or tomorrow morning. I can just get my fat thumbs down in there. There we go. And hopefully we'll get three nice queens out of this. If we only get two, we let them lay for 21 days. Sometimes I'll do a little bit shorter than that if I'm using them for myself. Because when I use them for myself, I literally take them out of here. And a lot of times I'll take them on with a frame if it's really packed and stick them right into one of my colonies and plug them in. So they really don't get caged. And they just, there's a little hiccup there, but nothing too extreme like shipping queens. So there you have that right there. Now, how would you feed something like this in the middle of dearth? Or maybe a really rough week of rain? You take this right here, and whew, that glare about blow your eyeballs out. And that ensures that those dividers, the, the bees can't get from one side to the other, especially once we get the lid on it. And I had the lid one second ago. And I guess I'm going to have to hunt that down. So you can see how there's just little notches the bees can get through, but this lid does not have a feeder rim. So it's nice and flat, puts that pressure down so the bees can't get from one compartment to the other. And now we can put a nice jar right in there with syrup on each one of these if we need it. Now, being in the middle of the honey flow like we are, there was food in, in, in those uh, frames. I would drop those cells like I did either put on a regular leg or lid or have plugs for these holes and then whenever I come back 14 days from now and see if I have made a queen so I'll wait two weeks and if she, they're laying and they look like they could use some food then I'll give them some one to one or three quarters sugar pound of sugar to one pound of water make it a little bit thinner depending on the needs of the colony so there's that right there and uh, now what are we going to do with this big colony over here? So like I said, I already found the queen. She's a little lackluster, so I wasn't a too big of a fan of her performance. We are going to get rid of her 
And I'm going to show you what we're going to do to get, one, rid of more of these queen cells, but two, also get some more nice queens. So I'm going to turn this into a double deep situation. And I'm going to div divvy up the resources. D d d d divvy up the resources. <laughs> Watch too much Looney Tunes. All right, let me grab a double screen board. So it would be nice to balance out the frames of brood and the frames of food. So let's see, we have 4, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 frames, so 9 to a box. If you have 10 to a box, that's fine too. We got a frame of partially capped brood, eggs and larvae down in here. Yeah. Different stages of larvae. And she was pretty good. She just just wasn't able to really put it out. Like th this colony over here, I've been pulling it back all year. It's been trying to swarm. It's so robust. I've been able to make nukes with it so robust. And this is the first thing I've been able to do with this one. So it's just uh, the queen's not performing at as high of a level. All right, so there's a nice frame of brood there. There's some brood on this frame. Keep in mind, this bottom box is going to get all the forager bees back. So you can cut it back a little bit more. There's some brood up at top. Brood in the adjacent frame, all over this frame right here. Nice capped brood right here. And of course, if you had more of those three ways that you were wanting to make up, you could totally just break this down and probably fill, you know, nine of those maybe? Probably nine, I'd say, with this hive. So that's three of those boxes. That's nice. And out of nine, you might end up with eight or nine queens. You might only end up with four or five, but they're your queens and they've been mated in a nice, small environment. I think they do a lot better like that four frames it's partial brood there's brood over there I think uh, they look pretty good the way that they are I'm just gonna throw these two frames down below we already shook all the bees off of these frames And now we are going to take a ripe queen cell. In this situation, we're just gonna drop it like that. Plenty of bees here. Also, it, there's not a flat lid going over it. They will keep that warm, plenty of bees. So here's our double screen board. And it is flat like a lid right here. We have this bottom screen. Well, it's flat like one of our lids that has the feeder rims, sorry. I'm gonna drop this down on top. That gives them plenty of room above. And the nice thing is, all the heat from this is gonna go up and warm this box. So if too many forager bees go down here, not quite enough to cover the brood in this box, the heat's still gonna come up here and warm this up and make it easier on those bees. Also, since the, there's two screens and the bees can't exchange mandibular pheromone from the queens, neither side will know that there's a different queen. Both of these hives have plenty of food, multiple frames worth if it's all added together. And I'm guessing that both of these have two or three frames of brood, plenty of bees. But if I was gonna lean on giving one side more, of course, definitely the top box because they're not picking up any of the foragers. So I gave them that nice frame of brood. And hopefully we'll get a new queen here and one down the bottom. I did this a lot last year. It did really good for me. The year before I tried it out and I liked it. Last year I did a lot of it. And it's a great method of requeening big colonies. And of course you can raise these cells for very inexpensive amount of money. They're just, a, when you raise your own queens, it's, it's so wonderful. So you can stick that there. 
I don't think I'm going to stick it a little bit more towards the center because there's more brood there. But uh, so there you have it. Now this one is flat right here, but we have that feeder rim so it'll bow up in there, and it's just going to get help them stay a little bit warmer. Only thing I don't really like about these uh, foamies or double bubbles, it's technically called reflectix around here, find it at Lowe's, is that a lot of times you can get ants that build up in between the lid in here because the bees can't patrol it. And the ants really don't cause any problems other than you can get them all over you and all up your pants when ants in your pants is almost as bad as a bee in your bonnet. So anyways, that's what we're doing. That's, we're raising a bunch of queens. Um, this colony may have looked pretty good to a lot of you and you know used to ought to just let this colony go but it is the queen's on her way down so uh, new queens great queens new queens dead mites and good nutrition thanks for watching our videos all right I forgot some things in the video I do most videos however um, for those of you who didn't notice there is an entrance on the double screen board so this colony right here can forage once they figure out where the entrance is and they graduate to forager bee age. And that mated queen, or excuse me, that queen cell that we dropped in there will leave out of that to go on her mating flight and hopefully return and be awesome like we love to see. Now over here, this is where all these nice queen cells were made. Mm -hmm. And this was this box was created from just strong colonies that needed pulled back. And we were just like, what are we gonna do with all this brood? And with like, yeah, it's make more queens can you have too many good queens the answer is no you know you cannot and so there's quite a few bees up in there and what we are going to do is pack this box to sell some queens to some lucky person just pulled these queens out about an hour ago and we got them rigged up we've got a sponge that's moist down in here it's wet and we've got some nice queen candy which for those of you who don't know that's two pounds of powdered sugar with one cup of honey and it's nice if you warm that honey up a good bit it mixes in quite a bit easier um, now you can feed bees this candy. It's also used for the plugs on uh, these queens right here. So there's the queen candy right there and it works really good. However, you definitely wouldn't want to feed this during winter time because there is a little cornstarch in powdered sugar. And if you did that in winter time, that can sit there and, and mess up their guts and really cause your bees a lot of problems. This time of the year, they can take cleansing flights and let her go. Just let it go. I need to sing that one to my daughter in that context and see what she says. Anyways, getting back to bees. We need to shake a decent bit of nurse bees in here so that these queens are well fed, well maintained. Bees are a social insect and the queens really suffer. If they, even if they have everything they need nutritionally and temperature wise, they really don't do as well if they don't have some bees around them. So this is mostly forager bees. Some of them have nurse bees. Some of them have graduated to forager bees. We're just gonna pull this out. And we're gonna shake that down in there. And then we are going to get rid of all the forager bees. You can see them getting rid of themselves. I like it when the bees help me out. We're going to give a little bit more smoke so we can get rid of the rest of them because some of them don't always take off. And once I give them a little bit of smoke like that, that pretty much gets rid of 90% of the forager bees. And you can see these bees down here and they're just clustering on the walls and they're confused and they're trying to figure things out. And that's the young nurse bees. And a few drones in there, but you know, you're blocking my shot, girl. Those drones, you know, they don't know much. Ask any woman. All right, shaking them to the corner like that. 
Oops, and there's a little bit of water in there. And still a couple foragers, but mostly nurse bees. And that was plenty of bees in there, so those queens feel kind of like they're in a hive. Really helps things out. All right, so just kind of recapping a little bit, covering stuff that I missed. Thanks, Laurel, for the reminder, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.